Hey guys, it's Sean here from Microbudget Film Lab. Hope everybody's doing well today. And I just found out today we basically have picture lock. We'll have the new file in our dirty little hands in, I don't know, the next couple days. So that got me thinking about our post-production process and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about it because as with most discoveries in the process of making a movie, it came about by accident the way that we did post-production this time. The last time around, uh, we did post-production. We hired a, an editor and then we went to a post house after getting a deal from them. And it was, it was kind of an awesome situation. We got it for really cheap, but it still cost us, well, a boatload of cash. So this time around, we decided to uh, move to Spain, not because of the movie, but because we wanted our kids to learn Spanish. And I work freelance from home, uh, so I can be anywhere really, as long as I have an internet connection. And, and that's why behind me, you can see the Alhambra Palace because we're living here in Granada, Spain, which is pretty much awesome. Uh, it's, uh, it's a beautiful place here and we love the mountains and we love Spanish culture and we love the opportunity to learn Spanish and uh, for the girls, our daughters, to learn Spanish. But it posed us with a problem because suddenly we had to figure out a way to do our post-production in a country and a city where we had no connections, where we didn't know anybody and so we weren't sure what we were gonna do. Now the first thing was that we had already started working with an editor before we moved. Uh, she had been with us through the shoot uh, a year ago last summer and had started you know, working on the assembly and then the, uh, the rough cuts uh, and so on. And we didn't want to just drop her and try to find somebody here because she was doing an amazing job and she is a very talented editor. Um, and she was also, she's doing it for nothing basically. Uh, to, in order to get a feature film editing credit. She works as a, a professional assistant editor, but she really wanted this credit. And uh, it's been awesome for us. So we had to figure out a way to make that work. And what we did was work remotely. And it has been a challenge for us, for sure. And we had a lot of learning along the way. But there's a couple of tools that are worth knowing or a couple of techniques that can really help you out if you do this. One is a, an online app called Whipster where you go and you basically transfer if your, uh, your cuts of your movie are up on Vimeo, you can transfer them directly into Whipster. And then once they're in Whipster, what you can do is you can post notes right on the timeline of your film. So if there's a scene where you want to make a cut, you just tap on the screen and uh, a window will pop up on the screen, a note window like you do if you're say you're working in uh, Adobe PDF Reader and you leave a note and then they can see those as points along the timeline and just keep you know forward through those your editor that is can forward through those and you can add other people other collaborators say your co-directors in a third country or uh, whatever it happens to be you can all make uh, comments along the timeline and that was great but for um, it's Sunday here so you can there's a lot of bells ring in Granada on Sundays uh, and that works great for uh, the sort of early stages of editing, but it can pose some challenges later on where you're trying to do fine cut kind of material, like work within scenes to really you know, smooth out uh, the, the, the final cut of those scenes and get the, the way that you want it to do. And then what we did was we worked by Skype, but you can't, it doesn't work to transfer entire files back and forth because they're just too enormous. The output takes too long. It's just completely impractical. So what we would do is we would have a, a, a list of scenes that we wanted to work on based on notes that we'd done on, on Whipster uh, on the previous cut. And then we would go through each scene and then Kelly would output that scene. And while it was outputting uh, and uploading, and it would be a small file because it would just be say, you know, 30 seconds or a minute, two minutes, she would upload it. And while she was either outputting or uploading the, the revisions to the scene, we would be working on the next scene. And then we would go back. And sometimes we would work two scenes ahead and then we would go back. So we were in a process of constantly being able to work on it. It wasn't the same as when you're sitting in a room with your editor and you're able to work on it. But nonetheless, it worked and it allowed us to work remotely. But maybe the more important uh, point for our purposes of how you can do a film uh, for very little money is that working remotely has these disadvantages in that you're not in the same room with somebody, but it has these advantages in that you can you know, a shop in the marketplace of people who are offering services and find much cheaper options because there are people in other countries who don't have the same kind of overhead as people in, uh, say, in North America that you can work with. So, you know, we found a colorist in Spain, for instance, and we're working with an audio mixer here in Spain. Uh, you know, we got received applications through, we went through a website called Upwork, I should say, which is a freelance website. 
And there's another uh, website called Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. And you can find people on there for a really good deal. And you can look at, they'll, they'll send you links to their portfolio. You can see the kind of work that they do, what uh, their credits are, and all that kind of thing. And you can find some really awesome people in various places in the world. And it, you know, you have the challenge in that you're not going to be able to sit, be sitting there in a room with them while they're doing the color correct, but they can send you uh, links and either either sequences or the entire film, and you can send them back notes via Whipster or uh, other methods, you know, through Skype calls and that and that sort of thing. So you can make it work. And now this time around, our uh, editing or our post-production budget is going to come in probably about a third or a quarter, really, of what our last post-production budget did partly because we spent a lot of money going into a fancy uh, post-production house. Even though they gave us a deal, it was still $12,000. Uh, our editor, of course, is working for free, as I mentioned. We're, we have a composer this time, uh, the same composer as we had on our last film. But uh, in terms of uh, any sort of pre-recorded music, we're not going to pay for pre-recorded music. That was a mistake we made last time. It cost us a lot of money. So just through those kinds of savings, we're going to end up saving probably $15,000. And that obviously is significant. So from here in, well, I would say sunny Spain, but it's not so sunny today. It's still beautiful Spain. Uh, you can see that it's possible, as we learned by accident, to find real savings in your post-production bill and still get really high quality if you don't have people, you know, if you're not editing it yourself or have friends who will do it for you and so on. So it's something to keep in mind. I think that uh, the, 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 the opportunity to access international freelancers has really changed the game in a way similar to the way that technology is changing the game uh, in terms of cameras and uh, all sorts of other levels, lighting, lenses, everything. Uh, in terms of uh, keeping the prices down. So it's one layer to add to your uh, savings cost, or savings bill, or savings coupon. I don't, I'm not sure what the word is, but you get my point. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you and to celebrate our coming uh, picture lock on our film and say that we can't wait to see it and to share with you the next step in the journey of fucking my way back home, which is the name of the film, or as I like to call it, we're never going to get distribution. So have a great day and have a great Thanksgiving weekend and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.